This is the Erasing Shame Podcast. I'm your co-host for this episode, DJ Chuang. And today I'm joined with Isabel Tom, who's the author of a very valuable book, The Value of Wrinkles. And she is Chinese American based in the great state of Maryland. And I'm coming to you here from California today. How are you, Isabel? Thanks for joining me for a conversation. Hi, DJ. I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. I enjoy talking on podcasts like this, so thanks for having me. Yes, and you have a great podcast as well, so we'll add a link in the show notes. Is it also called Value of Wrinkles? It's called The Value of Wrinkles. <laughs> it's not hard. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you have such a unique calling, and we're going to start our conversation with what comes to mind when you hear the word shame with all that you do. Oh, boy. Well, I think when I hear the word shame, I actually think you know, all of my work is, it surrounds um, caring. It's all about caring for the older generation and valuing them. But I really kind of like go close. I, I start thinking about my own identity as an Asian American, because I really feel like there is even more shame being an Asian American. And I think it just complicates being able to care for somebody as they age. Mm. I mean, it just makes it come. It, it's hard enough when somebody is aging and you're caring mm -hmm. for them and you want them to have the best. But then as an Asian American, I think there's, it's just so complex. Um, I think a lot about the relationships between like adult children and their parents mm -hmm. as their, as you know, an adult child is caring for their parent and just how the older generation, you know, doesn't want to talk about certain things mm -hmm. and how that's hard. And then how the younger generation out of respect does not want to talk about certain difficult topics. And so mm -hmm. that's what I, that's what I think about. I, I'm not sure how to give you an easy answer. I don't want to think about No, there, shame. there is no easy answer. And that's part of the challenge when it comes to the shame the culture that we all have been affected by and shame isn't just an asian thing it's a human thing yeah we see that all the way back in genesis 3 and i'll share from my personal experience and i really appreciate yours because um i've been ushered into this um elderly caregiving season first with my dad being on bed rest for 3 years mm. uh during the last season of his life. And this was 10 years ago when he passed. And then more recently, my wife and her parents, mm -hmm. being my father-in-law and mother-in-law, have had mental degradation along the lines of dementia and memory loss. And so over the past three years, we've had to deal with a lot of challenging life situations. And it's finally come to some resolve this year when both of them are now safely off the streets and not mm -hmm. driving and in assisted living. And so in one sense, it's a season of life that all of us, as we become adults and parents and our, uh, we have children and perhaps, and then our parents age, we're thrust into this season of while trying to figure out how do we care for them. But you bring such a rich experience because you've actually worked in the field of elderly caregiving before you had to also provide caregiving for your parents. Yeah, so actually I started working in the senior care field right out of college. And I would, it depends how you define caregiving because I lived with my grandparents since I was born. And so mm. I think in many ways I was, I, I tell people I learned how to be a caregiver before I became a parent. So I actually feel like being a parent is very hard. And I, in terms of caregiving, that's something that I just, you know, it incrementally got, um, it, it, my responsibilities increased. I was also doing it with my family, but because I worked in the field, I was also, there's another part of this whole experience that, um, I guess it, it was enriched by my professional experience. Mm -hmm. 
Now, uh, let, let's explore a bit because your professional experience, you've worked with non-Asians as well as Asians. So with the time we have, let's talk about the unique opportunities and challenges of working with uh, Asian elderly. Yeah, and actually. So oh, go ahead. What, what, how do you define what's elderly, I guess? I guess after retirement, 65, something Well, like that? officially it's 65 and up if you look at the term you know, older Mm -hmm. adult, but, you know, some places they will say 60 and up, or you'll see some places say 50 and up, but I would Mm -hmm. say officially in the United States, it's 65 and up. Mm -hmm. I think when it, you know, I think most of my professional experience has been caring for um, non-Asians because Mm -hmm. the reality is a lot of Asian families feel bad for having their loved one go, you know, having to send them to an assisted living or having to, or not being able to care for them at home. So there's that one layer of shame Mm -hmm. where if you can't care for your family, you know, for your older loved one, the way that either they hope that you would, or culturally, you know, you're, you may be expected to, um, that's just one, one area where you could explore, but I would say that in caring, in in working, so I first worked in the senior living field, Mm -hmm. and that is mainly, you know, it is mostly not Asian at all. Mm -hmm. And I had this huge, I guess it was a burden that has become greater over time when I was working in this, at a retirement community in assisted living in skilled nursing. And that was that I saw these great services for older people. I was learning how to care for older adults, but I knew that like my grandparents would never be able to, you know, even if they could move to one of those beautiful assisted livings or retirement communities, they wouldn't benefit from it because it wasn't catered toward their, for their needs. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I was really, I was thinking about this this morning in terms of shame, you know, I think one of my struggles as just in general is just not feeling good enough. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I think especially for adult children or even grandchildren who are trying to care for their elders, Asian elders. Um, I think when it comes to caring for their loved one, as they get older, they can really feel like they're not doing what they should be. They're not meeting their own expectations of how they should care for their grandparent or parent, but also maybe the expectations that their parent is put putting on them. Um, and I feel like that's very difficult because really our number one, our healthcare system for any caregiver, I mean, November is national caregivers month. So I think oh. I'm thinking about this even more, mm-hmm. but for anybody who's caregiving in the U S like our healthcare system is really not set up to provide you with all the resources that you need. So you are going to feel like you're lacking and you're going to feel like you're overwhelmed because you don't have the resources in place. And then if somebody is caring for um, an older person who is Asian and particularly if their parent, somebody's aging parent is um, not as Westernized, right? Like they are, Mm -hmm. they, they are, um, they really value and have not, you know, they, they're more Chinese than American, I guess, or more Asian than American. And they want the Chinese food and they want the community and all of that. You are going to feel like you're lacking even more because the number of services out there specifically for Asian older adults, unless you live, maybe I think in your area, you have some of those resources, right? But Mm -hmm. Even in where I live, my county, the minority is the majority. So there's a lot of Asians in this area. But I think the one, there was one assisted living group home. It had eight eight beds, eight rooms. It's closed down because the, mm-hmm. the owner is um, retired now. So mm-hmm. you you just don't see those resources out there. And that's not, um, there's more resources that are needed, you know, like having a home care, um, an aid come to help out and things like that. Chinese speaking aids. I mean, if there is one, they're probably taken. You know? mm-hmm. So there's just a lot in terms of not being able to meet the needs of our elders when we really, we really care to, we want to. 
And I think that can um, lead to a lot of stress and overwhelm. Yes. And that's what we experienced even here in California, where there are many Asians and my in-laws are Chinese. And we had a very challenging time finding Chinese help, uh, both just people that could run errands for us or provide some services at the home and certainly in assisted living, even more challenging. And the ones we could find were just not very good quality. It was kind of a mom and pop operation and didn't seem professional. And so we're stuck in this very challenging place to care for those who are family members and it kind of heightens the family drama. So what kind of help can we find when we feel like there's no help? And in our situation, particularly, we just were not able and equipped to do that caring, caregiving ourselves. Oh, that's a loaded question. Okay. So I think the first thing I would say is just realizing that just if your older loved one is not happy and is showing a lot of not just disappointment, but like, um, not resistance. What's the word? <laughs> Frustration. Frustration. Um, they're just not happy with the way, with what you're doing. Like they just mm -hmm. seem like they're so, um, displeased by your, your level of, um, action or the way that you're responding. Like you haven't invited them to live into your home. You haven't whatever. Right. I think to recognize that that doesn't mean you're not doing, you're not doing a good job and it mm. doesn't mean that you're not, you're, you're not doing anything. Um, mm. like I said, our healthcare system is not set up so that you are going to succeed. And in terms of just senior care in general, caring for an Asian elder gets like that much harder because even if you had the money, even if you had the services, even if there were beds and rooms available, even if you had an aid, like it's just, it is not, um, we haven't gotten there yet in terms of providing really great care to older adults in the U.S. for Asian elders. Um, so just to recognize mm -hmm. that it's not, it may very well not be you. Mm -hmm. um, you just have very limited resources and support to um, to draw from. Mm -hmm. um, I think taking time to learn and equip yourself. And I think it's less about trying to figure out what services are available, but more understanding how to approach our relationships with our elders. And a lot of times people come to me and they think, oh, do you, do you know an Asian or a Chinese speaking aid? Do you know a Chinese speaking mm -hmm. assisted living? And Really, I think what we can do even more is just learn um, to understand the dynamics of our family first, um, hmm. understanding, you know, ourselves and maybe where we might feel ashamed for certain things and trying to identify like the truth about our, our situations so that we don't end up having a lot of baggage as we care for somebody else. Hmm. Because I think when we haven't identified, when we haven't processed a lot of our own stuff, it, it gets carried into when yeah. we care for somebody who's older. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. So I, you know, I, I think you may know, I have a digital course I created prepared to care and that's exactly yeah. why I created it is because most people come thinking, Oh, I need this service and that service. I need more money to be able to provide for my loved one. But I think it's really just understanding how to love somebody as they're getting older, as their change is happening, and then just understanding how your relationship um, was and then how it's changing too. Mm. Now, your book also covers a great um, deal, as I remember reading it, The Value of Wrinkles. It really mm -hmm. helped us to see, yes, um, the relationship has changed. It's a different season of life. There's all kinds of needs that can be overwhelming. And you said it well, that 
yes, it's just going to be hard because we're going to be under-resourced, but there's still value in the life they've lived. And you provide a number of practical exercises of how to bring that value out so that you can still honor the relationship because the Bible tells us um, and there's truth in honoring your parents and honoring your grandparents that, that we we live well in our days. And so uh, even in that hard season, mm -hmm. there are some valuable things to draw from it. So that's in the book. And then in the course, do you also talk about, well, how do you go about navigating the complexity of the healthcare system and the resources? Or is it more focused on just doing the um, relational and personal work of understanding the transition? Well, I, a huge part of it, it's mainly, I, I, I start off with um, an acronym, a, an approach. So mm. I kind of give like a framework for how we should approach caring for somebody as they're getting older, because I think, as I mentioned, we get so distracted by all those other details mm -hmm. and really, you know, I think one of the issues that people often have is resistance, resistance of their loved one. And in a huge part of it is just that their loved one, um, you know, our parents are afraid or there's a lot of different emotions. There's a lot of different things behind. Um, there's a lot of things that people are going through as they are aging. And so if you can't, if you're not aware of that, then as you're trying to provide services and this and that, that actually is not really, it, it's going to, it's, it's necessary, but you're going to hit a lot more resistance. You're going to get a lot more stress. You're going to have a lot more family drama. If you can't first step back and say, okay, anytime I go, anytime I'm caring for my loved one, anytime I'm approaching them, like this is how I should care for them. And a huge part of it. And I think as a Christian, like I'm very passionate about this is um, it is a really beautiful thing when we can minister to our older loved ones, our older family members, but just an older person in general by showing them that they are valuable in God's sight. And mm. I think our culture, our society doesn't do that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, so many people as they're aging, I mean, they are ashamed of their age and mm -hmm. they really feel, and this is even in Christian circles, is they really feel like, okay, I'm getting older, like I'm useless, there's nothing good about yeah. me. And so I think if we can look at, first view our loved ones and see that, wow, you know, they're they are they are so um they have so many experiences. They have gone through so much. God has created them like so beautifully. And even in this time when they can maybe not run around and contribute, you know, in the ways that they used to there are still so many ways that they can contribute. So I think first it's like us realizing that somebody who is aging is still valuable. We have to realize mm -hmm. that first and then helping to minister to our loved ones and reminding them that. Cause I, I just feel like over and over, well, if you're around somebody who's aging, um, especially with health conditions and different in loss, you know, mm -hmm. the loss of loved ones, there's so much grief. And mm -hmm. so it's actually a very heavy time. And I think somebody who is um, on the older end, like they really need younger friends to encourage them. And um, because they're going through a lot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the grief, the word grief is appropriate here because there's, so much feeling of loss, loss of uh, abilities and capabilities, loss of memory, uh, perhaps no longer working. Mm -hmm. and loss of loved ones. Yes, that's another system. That's another part of it that um, for those that uh, live in assisted living or just trying to stay connected with friends, that friends pass on and among their peers, it can feel like overwhelming that everybody is passing. And then it, people are just waiting around for their turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When a different way to look at it is to realize, well, you're still here and you have a purpose and you still have value. And 
others can draw that out and mm -hmm. really support that. And it's, and it's kind of like, it's funny being Asian. We, we, we need that at every stage of our life, but something in our Asian culture doesn't give us much affirmation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm just hearing now, oh, even for those who are older, they need it just as much as when we oh, did yeah. when we were teenagers and young adults. And we all struggle through life. Yeah, it's affirmation is actually, you got one part of the framework. <laughs> mm. A for affirmation. Mm -hmm. They need affirmation. A. Hey, we still need A's. That's great. Yeah. Well, well, you've um you've been a great advocate. I've had um great joy meeting you in person. I really appreciate your work. Thank you for giving us some tangible things to help those of us that are uh, on the brink of that season or bookmark this and file this away and know that there's a resource available to us when we start um interacting with whether it's grandparents or aging parents that are uh, elderly that there, there are a few resources even though there may feel like there's not enough so yeah. do you have a closing thought as we uh, wrap up this episode yeah definitely i think the ideal ideally you should think about it before you are actually caring for somebody and i think because mm -hmm. it has to do with relationships like to provide good senior care or elder care. It's actually that you, you, you take the word care. It's just mm. about caring for a person. And so to be able to care well for somebody, you have to have a relationship. You have to know them well enough to be able to care for them and to know their needs. Mm. So I think it's never too early to prepare to care for somebody or to think about caring for them as they get older it it there is such thing as being too late unfortunately right so mm -hmm. it's never too early to think about it so well thank you so much Isabel. it's great connecting with you and again people can reach you at the value of wrinkles on so value, instagram yep value of wrinkles.com and value of wrinkles.com on the web yeah and on instagram it's at isabel c tom <laughs> Okay, we'll yeah. add a link in the show notes. Thank you. At eracingshame.com. Great talking with you, Isabel. Blessing to you. Thanks, DJ. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Erasing Shame podcast. Get this episode's show notes at our website, erasingshame.com. Subscribe to the Erasing Shame podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or any podcast app. And please add a rating and review so that we can reach more people with our message of hope and healing. 